My name is Chris Jones. You guys are all receiving right now a letter that many of you might have been given a copy of this past week. Um, it has come to my intention that uh, the CPOA uh, lawyer had written a, an email to the city council before six o'clock in the morning on the uh, date of that it was supposed to be uh, voted on by city council who would be elected to the CPOA board, or sorry, to the CPRB board. Um, Don Weaver, who is in the audience tonight, I'm sure he'll have something to say after I talk, um, has decided to rise to the level of harassment and int intimidation tactics. There is no reason in the world for him to write a letter, an email to the city council uh, trying to degrade both my character and the character of Ms. Gutierrez Perez. I'm very disappointed that a member of the police uh, officers association would do this. As I said before, um, Mr. Weaver has been filling his rants online at city council and here in front of this board with half truths, lies, and in amounts of intimidation. I would expect better from our police department and I would like for you guys as you are hearing this to remember when you hear from him at future board meetings to remember that he isn't trying to intimidate people. Now, as per the last meeting, I would like to address the policing of tone and uh, being dismissive of concerns that certain members of the board had. I would like for it to stop. It is not appropriate. Police Chief Jones also did it, and he likened expired tags to violent crimes. As a reminder, the purpose of this board is to provide an external independent process for review of actual or perceived police misconduct by police officers, thereby increasing the police department's accountability to the community and the community trust in the police department. As Dr. Farley addressed in her speech tonight, it is important to keep an arm's distance from the police department. You cannot do that if the Police Officers Association is trying to intimidate members of the general public, if they are trying to intimidate witnesses, and we cannot do that if the chair is constantly meeting with the police chief. Citizens must believe that they are being treated actively and with integrity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else? member of the public yes Renee Carter um, Columbia citizen and so I would like to address that um, tonight you heard a presentation on an investigative board and I'm here again to support that the proposed model be changed using an investigator and including an audit component that it's actually more impartial for both sides of, um, you know, the the board and the police department. First of all, an investigator is not connected with either side, but represents seeking the truth in an impartial way. Second, the police review board doing the audit and making the recommendations should have standardized recommendations based on the type and severity of violations. This makes recommendations impartial, rather based on what board members' views of the police officers being investigated. Third, most of us know that businesses, governmental agencies, and medical professionals do not investigate themselves. Rather, they are investigated by an impartial party, and there are um, also standardized decisions you know, of what will happen based on what they've done and the outcomes of those. 
other entities do, if they do investigate themselves, it puts them at risk of either um, unfair outcomes for the person who's asked for an appeal or an investigation, or it puts them at risk of being viewed as being partial to the investigated person, in this case, the police. Our public view of One what's minute. been happening one minute. Okay. The public view of what's been happening is that this is not an impartial board. It's a performative board, and it doesn't stand for anything. Rather, it's looking as if there's a lot of um, posturing in order to support the police department. And that's not fair to your citizens, nor is it fair to the police, because people form very bad opinions of the police department when you do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brianna Larimer. Um, full transparency, I used to be the public information officer for the Columbia Police Department. I now am a citizen. Um, and I'll tell you as I stand and I've listened to several of these meetings, I've listened to city council meetings, and my heart breaks. Right, my heart breaks, and I'll tell you why. Um, our focus, in a lot of ways, isn't where it needs to be to secure a firm foundation in doing what the mission of this board is. We need to look up, all right? We're down in the weeds a lot, and we're looking at little things. I heard tonight, all right, we spent a lot of time talking about a flyer rather than being concerned about how are we engaging those stakeholders that we pass that flyer out to? How are we remaining in contact with them so that they know how to best suit their needs and what they need as citizens in this community. All right, we spent a lot of time talking about um, whether or not commendations should be reported out in this meeting. All right, one of the missions of this board is to make sure that we're achieving a relationship, we're promoting and achieving relationships with our police department. And so why in the world would we not? Why would we not want to have good positive feedback in addition to the complaints? Right, and, and Harmon, I appreciate you, and I see you shaking your head. Let me tell you, the impact of messages, 55% of it comes from body language. All right, the body language I see alone on this board is heart-wrenching sometimes because we're not connected together as individuals, and you're not going to get something completed. And that's my concern. I have a two-year-old. All right, he's going to grow up in this community. He's going to see the divide. And I hear us saying, we're the gap. We're supposed to be filling that. Then let's do that. And let's look up. All right, instead of talking about harassment from CPOA, all right, let's talk a little bit about how we're promoting and enhancing the relationships with our department, what we're doing to do those things. All right. I think it's really important that we're focused on some of the bigger picture items rather than some of these smaller things. Because once you get that bigger picture and that firm foundation in place, that's when some of those other pieces are gonna come into play. So I, I acknowledge and I validate that there are a lot of feelings in this room, all right? And I appreciate all of them and all of the different perspectives, but I really am hoping that we can look up. And I wanna thank you, Ms. Miller, for your outreach report and talking about some of the things that you're gonna be doing to continue to engage the community because that's where it's gonna start. Our community is our biggest stakeholder for CPD, for CPOA, all right, for this police review board. And so let's get them here. Let's get them informed. Let them understand what's going on and what we do and what the resources are. I think that's where it should begin. Then we can look at different approaches if we're unhappy or dissatisfied with the way things are going. The educational piece needs to be there. And in order to educate, we have to know where people are coming from. In order to know where people are coming from, we need to be able Thank to you. communicate. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Dina Hampton, 202 Bay Point Lane. I just want to commend the CBRP for the job you're doing. The, uh, the lady that spoke, I don't know her name, but she gave me some really, really neat information and ideas and her suggestion to educate ourselves, I think, is wonderful. And also, the Bill 
uh, SB 26, that's really tying your guys' hands. And especially when police officers can only be interviewed by two people at a time, that eliminates the CBRP board for investigating officers. I don't know what you're gonna do with that. Hopefully the suggestions about the different models offers you something to work with. I just wanna tell everyone you're doing a wonderful job. Keep it up, keep getting educated, keep talking to people. It's these people in the community that we're trying to reach. The people that aren't listened to, the people that have really good, you know, legitimate complaints that need to be heard. And this is where they're heard. I, I, I wish you all the best and I can see you. You're, I think you're on the right track, keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nicole Seaman. I am a former member of CPRB. Um, I'm a mother of three. I'm an ER nurse. I'm disappointed that there is so much ego going on in this room and we're not getting to the point of the human component of what you are here for. And that is our most vulnerable people in this community and the people that I care for every week. I also encounter many different agencies, 36 hours a week, okay? Let's get back to the human component of what is important. My question I wanna ask you is do you all like wasting time? Because when I was on this board, it was 10 hours a week. If you actually read, did the research, one of the reasons I resigned, because it began to feel like a political statement and not a function. I see you smirking. No. If you okay, I if you have just, something to say, please no, address I'm what I'm saying. No, I'm listening to you. Okay. So, with that being said, Rose has all my contact information. If you guys need anything, have any questions, please reach out. Let's get back to the human component. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rebecca Shaw, there's a few things that I wanna address throughout this meeting. So Professor Farrelly, one quote that she said stood out to me, cities recognize review only is insufficient. What we are doing looking at cases and looking at them after the fact is insufficient. We need to move to a model where we're able to see things as they come in, where everything is shared, where all of you have access to everything. As someone who has applied to this board before with a complaint, it took me weeks to get the same information that you had. You guys are my representative. You are everyone's representative out there. Everything that you get is the only thing that makes a decision for someone. When someone comes up here and says, I've been wronged, I feel like I've been wronged, they don't know the exact policy number they should complain about. They don't know exactly how to word their complaint so that it gets to the heart of what the problem is. Those of you who've sat up there and done your homework and know exactly what it is that that person needs to address, you are the backup. You are the people that make the difference. That's what your job is. So that moves me to my next problem, which is your flyer that the public has not seen a final copy of that you handed out at Juneteenth. There's a mission statement on there but there's no mission statement on your website. There's a legislative action on your website. So where was this mission statement formed and did the board have approval of this mission statement? The complaint form. I sit on the community development, housing and community development committee. You guys as a board should take the changes that you want to have made to the complaint form to Rose who should then take it to city staff for changes. Your board shouldn't be involved in this. That's why you have a staff liaison. The model and function of the board. Okay. I, I want to see a model that works for the public. 
a model that works for everyone. What we have isn't working. As was said in council, it is a Band-Aid. What has passed council to give you guys the ability to keep functioning as you are, you need to function better. Please follow up and ask Ms. Fairley whether or not other cities, boards, and commissions are there for education purposes. I feel like that is a very interesting part of your legislative directive. What is the outreach committee for? What are you supposed to educate the public on? Because if it's something like the change for the, the chief saying we're not gonna pull you over and smell marijuana and say we have to now search your car, I feel like that's a legitimate thing to educate the public on. If it's something like we need to prop up our police no, that's not your duty. That's not your job. Thank you. Your job, you can say, is to fill the gap. Your job is to be oversight. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Aida Glowen-Cozy, and I'm going to be speaking um, as part of Race Matters Friends. So that, I believe, is five minutes. I don't know if I'll use all of it, but uh, thank you. So um, I want to first echo um, some of the comments that have been made by Renee Carter and Rebecca um, Helms, and um, especially on the point of in alignment with um, December Herman's report that an investigative model is appropriate after listening to Professor Fairley um, at the beginning of the meeting. I think she made a lot of important points about the importance of a um, attempt at a neutral uh, investigator who can then um, speak to the, or, you know, speak to both sides and in regards to a complaint. And I think that's really important. Um, and I, I understand the need for the discussion of the minutia that has occurred in the course of this meeting today. Um, and at the same time, I really um, would encourage you to keep focusing on the function of the board, the ordinance that um, the board is created under, and what your actual responsibilities are to the public which in my very simplistic understanding is a focus on, as Rebecca said, reviewing being oversight to the police. Um, if your job is to receive complaints and review them and, and confirm whether or not a, an issue on behalf of the police officer has been perpetrated, then that is what you should be focusing on first and foremost. And if and thus your charge should be to figure out the best and most effective way to do that. And if you're not doing that, then I don't really know what the point of this board is. Um, I understand that there's a lot of feelings at play. I understand that there's a lot of um, personal opinions, politics, et cetera. But if someone has committed some kind of inappropriate behavior to a com against a community member, you are the chosen community members to then commit oversight over that and address that issue for rectifying that problem with the community because of what someone on the police like has committed. So, and if and if that's not what happened, then you're to determine that as well. But if something did happen, then that's your job. So I don't really understand why there was there's been discussions of a commendation board, you know, form, or if there's a discussion on, you know, let's make sure that the police uh, that the public know why the police are here. That's not your job. Your job is to explain if you're going to do outreach what the board does and what your function to the public is because your function is not to the police the police have their own systems in place to support them they have a union they have a public relations officer they have all kinds of that's important that's great that's their purview 
your purview is not that. I know, I believe you know this, um, but I feel it's necessary to reiterate. And, um, you know, this is a very hard position to be, to be working on and the effort that's necessary. I'm, I loved coming in and listening to Professor Fairley, someone who is far more educated on these issues than I am, um, answering questions, explaining what One other minute. models have been done um, in other cities. I am a huge fan of that. I think that's a really important thing to do is be comparing and looking at other options. Um, I really have, I've read December Harmon's report and I really think it is an appropriate place to begin and it's, it looks very well researched um, and I hope that that is where the focus goes in future meetings. Um, and I also think that if members of a board um, that they are serving as part of the public are harassed, then that should be addressed because by the organization that they may be investigating members of, that should absolutely be addressed, especially if we are going to focus on the humans who are at the heart of these issues because you cannot serve your public if you are also being harassed by the people you are helping to investigate and keep in line. So, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Thomas Maddock. So I've spent some time putting together my words on this. I'll try to remain calm. Some people might recognize me as perhaps a, I think the word is firebrand. When I worked at the Department of Social Services, which I did for three and a half years, I served a bureaucracy of state administration of welfare that required me as part of my job to lie to the public. Yeah, no ma'am your benefits aren't going to be canceled, even though I knew they were three times over the income. No, no, it's fine. I believe you when you say that man isn't in your house. A bureaucracy's function is to lie and to protect itself. And let me be crystal clear on something we are tiptoeing around. Police lie as a rule. You can see the nadir of that in Uvalde. I'm sure we've all seen the news, but it's not hard for me to find examples of this going on here. Look at the, all the contradictory statements regarding the Vibes nightclub shooting, which occurred in May of 2021. The police and the owners of the nightclub told a very different story. With that in mind, I, see peop I saw the members of the board's reactions, most members of the board's reactions to Professor Fairley's statements and an immediate discussion of some anti-police bias to which I would say, why would an oversight board not have to have an investigators some level of bias against the organization that they are investigating if their role is to provide oversight and investigation? Bureaucracies lie. They protect themselves. People part of that organization's also lie to protect themselves and those organizations should not be going in or discussing investigating or forming investigations of the police with the assumption that they are always i'm keeping track of my own time that they are always going to be telling the truth because the overwhelming preponderance of evidence when dealing with any bureaucracy especially the police in their blue wall of silence is that they are not the end. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Renee Maxwell. Um, first, I want to thank December for bringing Professor Fairley to this meeting. I learned a lot from her tonight. She was, she's an excellent resource. I really hope that board members will tap her for. Uh, all of her wealth of knowledge. Um, but after sitting through this meeting tonight, I really gotta say, <laughs> this is a really dysfunctional board. And as a citizen, that doesn't give me a whole lot of faith in your ability to handle a complaint that I might file with my local police department. And because police 
are the only public servants with a license to use deadly force. I think the, the need for accountability and oversight cannot be overstated. And that it's so critical for citizens to have trust in their police department and in, in their police, the people who, who are running around with guns in their community. And the police should welcome this oversight, really. I mean, they're the ones that are always telling us, if you're not doing anything wrong, what do you have to worry about, right? So uh, what I would like to see is for this board to take Dr. Fairley's advice and figure out your process, exercise transparency, get your shit together. Because really, I mean, this is really dysfunctional. And I appreciate what you all are doing. I understand how much time goes into this kind of work. And I wanna thank you for your willingness to take this responsibility upon yourself. And I hope this board can come together and learn how to work together and talk to each other in a productive manner. And I really hope people will support December's effort to come up with some kind of model. You clearly need something. And the fact that SB26 has really hamstrung your ability to even do your job, um, you really have to figure out how you can serve the community with the job that you are tasked with within the restrictions that the state of Missouri has placed upon you so that we can all have some confidence in this process because right now it's, it's not great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, Bria Stevens, concerned citizen. Um, kind of piggybacking off of what everybody else has said, sitting here and listening to this board, um, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, I think I might be wrong, and there's someone in the room that might be able to correct me, but I wanna say it was in 98, conversations were had because there were so many things going on in Columbia. A lot of fighting with the kids, trying to come up with programming. Um, my mentor, Ms. Wanda Faye Elbert, Almeda Creighton, Ms. Edie Prince, David Tyson Smith, James Robinette, a few others. I wanna say Mr. Easley, a lot of people I think he's loud, but that man knows what he's talking about. I wanna say to you guys, think about the community. It's about the community. It's about addressing issues that are happening. In 2001, I had an incident with an officer. I filed a complaint two different times on the same officer who accused me of not being disabled, and I told him, I don't have to tell you what my disability is. You can't look at a person and say they're disabled. I filed two complaints. It was taken to the police department. I never heard anything about it. Remember the people. It's about the people. Take all of everything y'all going through, research, but when you come in the doors and you doing the work, it's about the people. Take the personal out of it and remember the people. Get back to where it's supposed to be about, the people. When people have complaints, they gotta know that if they turn something in, that there's gonna be some follow through. If someone have a issue with an officer, me, because I was born, I'm the radical in my family. So hearing that people making threats, it is what it is. It's a shame that they're doing it. But remember the people. If you really gonna do this work, remember the people because that's what it was about. When we was having those conversations at Russell Chapel, we never brought in personal, political, uh, I'm gonna put this person in this position for this. It was about the people. We had people, there was a time when the review board would allow you to come and tell what happened. You didn't have to worry about filing a complaint because you was in the room. Yeah, I might wanna think about that because I don't wanna fill out no paper. I wanna be able to tell you and then you do something about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
evening, uh, Don Weaver. Uh, I just have a, a brief comment on behalf of the Columbia Police Officers Association. So one thing to keep in mind, and um, CPOA has, from its inception, always supported uh, and, and never opposed any fair and unbiased review of any police action at every turn. Um, we stood with David Tyson Smith back in 2008 uh, and publicly supported the creation of this very board. Uh, and, and it remains the case today that no member of CPOA that I'm aware of is opposed to any fair, unbiased, neutral, logical review of their actions. Uh, and secondly, I'd just like to encourage any of you, if you have I even heard a rumor that anyone is uh, intimidating or threatening or harassing, please, on behalf of CPOA, I implore you to please report that misconduct, potential law violations, whether that's to the city, to the state, uh, to the city police, anyone. Uh, no one likes uh, bad actors, uh, and no one wants any bad actors involved in this process. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. One else. My name is Peggy Placer. Um, I work very much as a volunteer for the RMF Community Bail Fund. As part of that work, we see the people who have been stopped, arrested, and jailed, and go to trial. Um, this whole idea about neutrality or having a balance of power just doesn't hold water for me because the full force of the law, as, as one of the other speakers said, the weapons, the presumption of guilt we don't have a presumption of innocence. We have a presumption that if you got caught, if you got stopped, if you got jailed, you are a bad person. These are the people that I bail out all the time, have in my car, have conversations with. They are not as described as horrible people. These are people who've gotten caught up in a lot of things in their lives. So um, this whole idea that, well, we'll have this side and that side, and they're even. No, you have to take into account that the balance of power is unequal in our society. And that you have to sometimes be the voice for the people who as, as Ms. Carlson admitted, were the ones that got stopped when she was on a ride along. So those are the people that I, um, I can't speak for. I wish they would, could be here to speak for themselves. But until they have that kind of nerve and that kind of power, I'll be here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, David Allen, and don't worry, I'll be under the three minutes. Um, first, I want to agree with Ms. Jones and say that the police toning needs to stop and the body language, you know, policing needs to stop. Um, a few months ago, I said that, you know, if people, you did outreach and then people came to you and you didn't work, it would be a poison. I think you can listen to a lot of the people here and see just how much they want to rely on an oversight board. But what I also see is that you could also be a remedy. There's a lot of people who are excited about this new um, model project because they see it as something that is on their side. I don't see an oversight as anti-police. I see it as pro-community. And people who think that something that helps citizens is anti-police is scary. And also, this idea that you need to be cheerleaders for the police as an oversight board, I'm, I mean, if the FDA came out and started doing commercials and advertisements for Burger King, that would be ludicrous. I mean, that, that, that'd be ridiculous. That's not what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be an oversight board. 
And so I would just say, you know, I am excited about this new model project. Um, I think that it is going to be very useful, and I think that the people want this in the city. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. <clears throat> My name's Christine Gardiner. Um, I hadn't really intended to speak tonight. I just wanted to witness and see what this was all about. I have attended another, a couple of meetings. Um, but I wanted to remind you of some past history and why there is such a lack of trust. Uh, I myself have four things that I experienced viscerally when learning about them. The first was a young man killed by a police officer in the East Campus, practically deheaded, and left there. There had been warning red flags about this officer. Nothing was done. Then there was, later, the taser craze, when it seemed that the police were tasing mentally ill people, people that was, it was inappropriate, and that had to be stopped. It was, but I don't think it really touched the problem. Then the chief made national TV, talking about pennies from heaven. That really wasn't very good. Lost trust there. And then finally, there was the expose of the brothel, brothel owner that the police colluded with for years. The man who had picked up young girls at the Wabash Station running away, taken them to his brothel, hooked them on heroin and other drugs, and the police colluded with that man so that they could get warrants served when he alerted people to it. So your job's really important because I don't know what investigation went on, I don't even know how these things kind of played out. All I know is that when I learned about them, all four of them made me sick because that's my police department. How am I going to trust them? These are serious things, and I really hope that we're on a new path here, that these things don't happen in the future, and the minor offenses stopping someone, throwing them on the ground. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about somebody throwing me on the ground and fingering me all over and threatening me. <coughs> but people do every day. And this is where the rubber hits the road. And this is why there is no trust. Thank you very much. <laughs> 